Hello, my name is Patrick Bourne. I'm a Cisco Technical Marketing Engineer for SPARSIP Endpoints. DHCP options for the SPA 500 series IP phones. The SPA IP phones now support four DHCP options, including option 66, which is most common, but also now options 159 and 160. The DHCP option to use List the options. If a file path is missing, the path will use whatever is specified in the profile rule. If a schema is missing, for example, you don't say if you're using HTTPS or HTTP, it will default to using TFTP. So when a phone first boots, it'll attempt to access a generated URL in sequence until it succeeds or until they've all failed. The phone will look for $PN and then expand it to the model name, example SPA504G, and uh, $MA, which will expand to the phone's MAC address. It's an example of the phone's web user interface, and you'll see it's, I'm listing the DHCP option to use. And on this diagram, it's showing you options 66, 160, 159, and 150 will be used in that order and the transport protocol of choice is HTTPS which is the default. This is an example of a DHCP server's configuration file running on a Unix system. Near the bottom you'll see I've listed several options there and all you need to do is uncomment the option in order to use it. So for example I'm using option uh, 66 here where it serves up the TFTP server name of 192.168.2.245 in the event that it, the DHCP server supplies only an IP address, the phone starts up and will perform the steps 1 through 10. First thing it does is Cisco Discovery Protocol, then a DHCP Discover, gets a DHCP offer back, and then the phone performs a DHCP request. It will then receive a DHCP ACK from the DHCP server and will then ARP for its new IP address then sends an IGMP join to join the multicast paging uh, group and then ste step 8 sends out a TFTP read request for the SEP as in SIP endpoint mac.cnf.xml and this is how the phone determines if it's supposed to run in SPCP mode or if it should be running in SIP mode and then step 9 sends a TFTP re uh, read request for XML default 504g.cnf.xml of course this is if it's a SPA 504 and again that's part of the test to see if it should be running in SIP mode or in SPCP mode and then finally step 10 the phone is ready to s register with a SIP proxy or be manually configured in the event of option 66 you'll see step 8 the phone still sends a TFTP read request to see if it should be running in SPCP mode but now step 9 and 10 are new the phone sends a TFTP read request for the slash spa slash 504g.cfg file. And this is basically how the phone resolves the slash spa dollar PSN variable. And then step 10, if it does not get a response, it'll send a request out for slash Cisco slash spa 504g slash and then the MAC address dot CFG for the phone. This is a non-configurable uh, file name that the phone requests and it only does that in the event that it doesn't receive a response in step 9. Looking if if the phone receives um, DHCP option 159 from the DHCP server you'll notice that step 9 and 10 change again and now it does an HTTPS get and it looks for the same file name. If you use option 160, so in step 9 the phone does a DNS query for the uh, provisioning server's name which it received in option 160 from the DHCP server and then steps 10 and 11 are similar to what you've seen before where the phone now attempts to securely retrieve the configuration files. Some resources that would help you in, in the event that you need is my Cisco community or cisco.com slash go slash 500 phones.